Well, he's a great guy, and he's a smart fella, and he formerly was a lawyer until he quit doing that. He's also an Army veteran, and he won a big award at Yale for his article dealing with uh, martial law, posse comitatus, at, at the law school. And now, here we are all these years later, he was also one of the top stabbers for Ron Paul. Here we are all these years later with Stuart Rhodes, six days from the election, total censorship online, all hell breaking loose, official Democrats saying they're going to arrest the leadership of the liberty movement, even when they can remove Trump. Democrats saying that they're going to rush the White House November 4th and 5th. Um, the left's claiming they're going to try to attack InfoWars as well. Not going to get into that too much on air. So, Stuart Rhodes, thank you so much for coming on with us to, 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 to cover the waterfront here. How would you describe the battle space we're in and what we're headed for right now? Uh, it's both mass gaslighting, like you were just talking about, but also mass projection. They're they're accusing us of doing everything that they're actually trying to do. Um, for example, you know, you have terrorists in the streets coercing Trump supporters, trying to stop them from getting into Trump rallies, beating them for even just walking around with, with a Trump T-shirt on. And, of course, you expect them to do that on Election Day. And so when those of us who are tasked with, with defending your rights – uh, announce we're going to stand up and, and protect people on election day. They immediately spin that as though that we're the ones going to be going out there. You know, our militia men are going to be out on the streets on election day outside of polls to intimidate voters. And that's what that's what they're that's what they're going to do. They're going to be stealing the election while accusing Trump and his followers of stealing it. They'll be out there coercing and 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 uh, threatening people while accusing us of doing. And it. let's be clear, these are all classic fascist and communist tactics on record with the media saying Antifa doesn't exist. I mean, they're really making a run at this country. How do you think the globalist Chicom run is going? How's their attack going? I think it's going pretty pretty well. I mean, the problem is, is they still have this massive pool of Americans out there who are, are dug in and are not going to recognize their fraud as being legitimate. That's the problem. But I think that, you know, if you're, if you're the Chinese, you're the communist Chinese, what would you want? What would you not want a nation that's your major rival to have an internal battle, to have a, a civil war going on? So I think I think either way the bad guys still win, even if their side you know loses in the, in the coming civil war, they still win by destabilizing the United States and knocking us down. It's so our deep state. The only way to ever really drain the swamp is to declassify all the secrets. And that's what he should do. Uh, I think he should do that right now. He should, he should do that as his, as his nuclear option. When they're trying to assail him and remove him from office illegitimately. I, I agree. Trump needs to launch himself. nuclear options now and not just roll the dice. Because the enemies we face are, are, are too powerful. He needs to launch nuclear options. What are those? Data dump all the CIA and FBI files. Uh, what else? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's a big one. That is the swamp water. The swamp water all these swamp creatures swim in are the secrets. They both protect them and control them. All that Epstein was doing, all the other you know, pedophile rings, the blackmail politicians, all of that is, is about control. You throw the skeletons out in the streets, they no longer have any power or control over those, those politicians. And all of us will know who the crooks are and, and who the who the good men, who the few good ones are, and then after that, leave it to us. And you know, the veterans of this country will go and and, and uh, put it to them and, and take them into custody and do what we have to do. Do not trust the FBI. I mean, obviously, the FBI is neck deep in this themselves. Well, that's because they're blackmailed and compromised as well. Sure, all, all of them, all, all the all the major players. I would say all the way up to the very top, including including Chief Justice Roberts, are, are probably compromised. And we all know this. You've been you've been talking about this for years. But I think Trump has the one last chance as a massive data dump and start declassifying. If Trump doesn't the do that in the protocol. next next three days, wh what do you expect to happen and what are the other options? If he doesn't launch the nuclear option, how do we fight conventionally? Well, that's the problem. If he, if he then declares an insurrection to be in effect, which is what's going to happen after Election Day, as we already know, the left's going to go nuts. They're going to accuse the right of stealing the election, of suppressing voters, of not counting ballots. And they're going to riot in the streets and try to do a color revolution. The only way to really stop that is with a data dump. Expose, you know, the real, real bad guys. Throw them out, throw the skeletons out in the, closet in the streets. Uh, get them out of the closet, throw them in the streets, and then the average American seeing that will know exactly who's dirty. But short of that, they're going to accuse him of trying to stay in power um, illegitimately by evoking the Insurrection Act after Election Day. That's why he should have done it. In my opinion, he should have done it before Election Day when he was the clear, undisputed president of the United States. Uh, now they're going to wait until afterwards. They're going to declare him illegitimate, and then he'll he'll try to suppress the insurrection, and they'll point to that and say, see, he's a dictator. My analysis is he's going to win, but because of the fraud, they may just say he lost, have the media announce it, 
And then when he challenges it, they're, they're calling him a dictator. They're the ones that are going to challenge. But if he challenges back, they've already defined that as dictatorship behavior. And he's going to be driven from power by these, uh, you know, armies of meth heads. They've already got cranked up and ready to go in D.C. Exactly. And frankly, we're, we're concerned about a Benghazi style attack. Um, that's why Oath Keepers will be posted outside of D.C. We've got some of our best men working on, on the plan right now for where we're going to be. But we'll make sure that we're within range because I don't trust the Pentagon. I don't trust the, uh, the brass. I don't trust even the Secretary of Defense to stand behind the president. I mean, I know it sounds outlandish and it sounds kind of crazy, but given the trajectory of the left and how far they've gone into weather underground terrorism already, I think it'd be, we'd be foolish not, not to plan for that. Talk about the Great Awakening. The globalists have got to be scared. I don't see how they get away with putting Biden in with all this Chinese uh, propaganda and espionage coming out, unless they're going to try to bring in a total tyranny to suppress all of us once they get in. Gets in, I think, I think at least uh, 